What's up gamers? Welcome to Gamer Nation here on Smosh Games. We got the entire crew back, including Laser Corner looks as healthy as ever. Good for you. Uh, guys, today we're talking about what makes a good FPS. Now I know this title, like you guys enjoy your first person shooters, yeah. am I right? Yeah. I do. Cool, so Love them. let's go into it. Like what makes a good FPS game? Uh, I don't think there's a lot of things that make a good FPS game, Jovan, but uh, number one off the top of my head, one that everyone loves, cool weapons. Cool weapons. There's so, gotta be cool weapons. So not mean, just good weapons, but cool weapons. Yeah, it doesn't mean there needs to be like crazy futuristic things necessarily, but the weapons have to be cool. There has to be cool weapons. All right, you can know, you like, name a game that specifically like really... Well, I know Laserkorn has a game that he loves that yeah, has cool weapons. Uh, Bulletstorm yes. is all about the weapons, and I talk about that game all the time. Flail gun, you wrap an enemy up, kick him at someone, and then explode him. Or the sniper rifle has a charge round where you can float people around. Just the weapons make the game, and it's why I love it so much. Cre it allows the player creativity, and it just keeps the game fun and exciting. Well, what about a game like um, like Battlefield or Call of Duty, where it's more modern-esque weapons, and you don't have that kind of creativity? I think in that. the weapons are still cool. I think yeah. it depends like how they work as well. Okay. It's not only about the look of the weapon, as Borderlands 2 showed me where that game seemed to only have like five weapons and they would just skin differently, so it was kind of boring, I think. Well, that's think. actually, it's funny that you mentioned that in Borderlands 2, because that was my small issue in Halo 4, is that you had three different origins, yeah. and each origin had its own, like, uh, assault rifle, its sniper rifle, and they were practically the same thing with, with very minute, small details to yeah. change them up. And I was like, I don't know, maybe a little more creativity in this one aspect could have just made the campaign that much cooler. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, the other thing is uh, the actual shooting mechanics. Are those good? And those vary from game to game. I feel like a lot of games now have that sort of uh, aim down sight mechanic, which has seemed to be working really well. But games like Halo and games like Counter Strike, it's all from the hip kind of thing. Yeah. So and then you only have specific guns that, that can actually scoping. zoom in. Yeah. yeah. Which makes sense because, like, if you have a pistol, you, you, this doesn't help you aim too much better. Mm. I mean, in in life it does, but in the game, not so much. Uh, Something for me uh, that kind of makes a, a, a shooting game good is uh, a nice uh, a nice assassination or melee kill Ooh. when you get close enough and you like slit someone's throat or snap their neck that is or fun. do like some sort of takedown. That makes it all the much better because if I get so, that close to someone, I kind of want like a little reward. I don't just want a little knife slash and bleh, and they fall down. Yeah. yeah. You know, I want something that shows like, yeah, I really. It I also kind of takes them. you out of the, in a good way, it takes you out of the, the first person part of the game where you're just used to seeing like a little yeah. floating gun. Yeah, it's good for immersion. It's like, oh, I am this guy. Yeah, and like, I have uh, arms. and look at Dishonored. The yeah. cool thing about the uh, the melee kill animation is that it actually gives teammates time to save you if you were to come up behind someone. You can still get shot. That's true. Yeah. Which I like as well. Yeah, it adds a little bit of realism. Because in, in real life, if I'm just like, that, you're not just going to fall down. No, dead. that's what I don't like about yeah. Call of Duty multiplayer is the knifing. Yeah. I feel like that bothers me a lot when it's just like, you've slashed me across my heavily armored vest. <laughs> I, oh, I'm instantly dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so would you say that realism makes a good FPS Depending game? Depending on, like, obviously in a game like Bulletstorm, I don't care about realism. It, you, I, I feel like you can't take that middle ground. Like, go one way or the other. Either make the weapons ridiculous and just Over the tons top. of fun and put mutants in the game and go that route, or go the realism route and be like, make this game realistic, make the takedowns look real, make the weapons look, feel, and sound real. Realistic gun sound effects in a game like Battlefield or you know uh, Call of Duty they is could, very important. They could do things to, to change it up even. Like, just changing the animation would almost fix that problem. Like, this doesn't do anything, but if you flip the knife over and like stabbed or something, then maybe yeah. that would be something that would remedy the problem, even if it was still like a one-hit kill. For me, what so. I, what really makes, uh, it brings an FPS game to the next level is the strategy. Like, if you walk into an area, it's like, okay, if it's really linear, you got these tight hallways, you know, okay, I gotta go through, kill this guy here, kill this guy here, make it through the door. Or you walk into a giant room and it's all of a sudden, it's like, all right, I have three guys over there, I got five guys over there, I have one gun with no ammo, if I go this way, maybe there's a new gun that I can get. Just giving you those opportunities to replay a level to be able to get better and better at it mm -hmm. with, with perhaps a, a different scenario in that situation. Yeah. That's true, and with, uh, with like the updated AI of today, those kind of levels become even more exciting because if you fail, you can always try a different option, but you could also run into the same problems because the enemies react in yeah. different ways. Yeah. I like I like some vehicles or some environmental things, fixed turrets, any kind of traps you can activate. 
Things that break up just, you know, shoot, 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 switch weapon, reload, shoot. Like running people over with a vehicle is always fun. Hopping on like a mounted turret or whatever, yeah. or activating lasers or what what have you. Always, uh, whatever they can do to break up uh, the, the simple shoot, uh, kill, reload mechanic is always good, I think. Yeah. And, uh, one thing that you harp on a lot, and I think that is sort of it's not necessary to every game, I don't think. I like how but, you know where he's going. But yeah. most games, it's 2012, have some destructible environment. Destructibility. Environments. When Very I, important. especially these war games, mm -hmm. like I want to go into a level and just by the time the match is over, I want the level to be demolished. There's nothing left. There's nothing to even hide behind because you've blown everything up. I agree completely. That's yeah. an excellent point. That's probably one of the most important things in a in a FPS is. It's 2012, like you said. Things should be destructible. Get yourself the frostbite engine. Get some engine that can make buildings collapse. You know, give me some realistic vehicle yeah. damage and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I like that. And yeah. I think the final piece for me is, uh, I'll call it balancing, but it's not even balancing. It's, and this is sort of, sort of exclusive to multiplayer, but balancing in the sense that uh, the way the game works makes sense. A lot of my complaints with the Call of Duty multiplayer is that they try to make it so every gun is like on an equal playing field almost. And that bothers me because in life, not every gun is on an equal playing field. So I think Counter-Strike actually has it the most right in that regard because they've sort of acknowledged this gun is better than this gun, which is better than this gun. But in order to get it, you're going to have to pay more money for it at the beginning of each round. And that's sort of one of the reasons why I think that game is superior to most yeah, like first person shooters. Perfect example of balance. Well, all right, so that, that's our opinion. Cool. Yes, uh, there's uh, two people I think that haven't chimed in. Let's yeah. uh, let's go to, over to Ian Anthony and see what they think. Whew, all right. Uh, what makes a good first-person shooter? I would guess shooting. Shooting would make a first-person shooter good. And if it's not in first person, then you're doing something wrong. Yeah. I don't know what makes a good first-person shooter. I'm guessing if a game only had one gun, then it would probably suck. Uh, Unless, of course, that was Portal, which kicked ass. Is that a shooter though? You shoot you portals. You shoot portals. I don't know, I, I got into GoldenEye and Perfect Dark for the N64 and then kind of never played, well I played Halo, the original one, and then never really played any first person shooters after that. I'm just not into first person shooters. So maybe that's the problem with first person shooters. <laughs> first the problem with first person shooters is that I'm not into them. Or that they're just first person shooters. Yeah. I enjoy first person shooters, um, as long as they keep mixing it up, but now everybody seems to be copying like, the Call of Duty thing where it's like you shoot for a while and then there's a scene where you're on like a, a turret for like five minutes and then it's back to shooting. They're just random. trying to give diversity, right? Yeah, but it all ends up being the same. So yeah, I'd say I'd say Portal was probably one of the best first person shooters just because That was actually that was managed... a puzzle game though, it wasn't just a shooter. Yeah. They used the mechanics of a first person See, shooter. See, I, I played Portal and I've loved it. I, I didn't yeah. know that it was considered a first person shooter. Kinda okay, good. what makes a good first person shooter? Puzzles, having to use your brain, not just mowing mother down. Yeah, it gets kind of boring just mowing mother down. I guess that would be the main the main thing that would make a first person shooter good. Uh, do more than just mow mother down. Mm -hmm. Interesting yeah. game. Wow, uh, they don't know anything about first person shooters at all. <laughs> Alright, well now it's time to go to our Gamer Nation, which is you guys, where we hit the interwebs and we uh, we want to find out what interwebs you guys thought were... Says. <laughs> what you guys thought it makes a good FPS game, so we got a few shout outs for you. First coming up is uh, Pikmin Liberation saying, uh, a wide range of weapons mm -hmm. and a great area with obstacles for harder aim and it'll become more of a challenge. So I thought that was actually, uh, we've seen that in multiplayer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Works out, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, that's kind of like what we said. Uh, this one, I actually, I like this answer a lot. Uh, Aaron McGrath X, zombies. We didn't really mention any of the Call of Duty Just zombie modes. Yeah. I don't think <laughs> zombies will instantly improve a game. I, I, don't know. I feel like there are good zombie shooters, but it's not just the fact that there are zombies in them that make them. A that's good true. I hate to disagree. Left 4 Dead would not be the same <laughs> if it wasn't for all the zombies. But Left 4 Dead yeah, is based on that's, that's a zombie <laughs> game. It's not like they well, I'm took, saying it wouldn't be the same. It's not like they took a shooter and then added zombies. That would just it be became good. It's yeah. like we're gonna build a game. I based believe in you, Aaron. Zombies You'd just be running from safe room to me. safe room with no threat at all. <laughs> yeah. It's just like this is a, a lovely of, day. It's just a bunch of people that are paranoid in the woods. It's funny though. <laughs> they do have mods where it's like I've seen mods where it's like Teletubbies attacking you, yeah. which is almost more horrifying. Ooh, yeah. So I play like that game. it depends. It depends what's attacking you because sometimes you could find more horrifying things than zombies. 
Uh, next we have Rain and Darkness saying, an interesting story, not just telling me I need to kill something without any goal, uh, any other reason other than, hell, hey, it happened in history. So, gotcha. Hmm. So it kind of takes you back to that wave of just like World War II shooters that we had. Mm -hmm. where it was like, oh, I need to go do that because that's but those what were fun. Yeah. I liked those. I don't know, I think there's something interesting about playing through those scenarios. I remember Medal of Honor Allied Assault was like the D-Day invasion, even though that game was dated, like by today's standards, that's still like one of the most intense things in a game that I've played, it's yeah. awesome. Now this might be a slightly skewed from history, but uh, anytime you have the Battle of Hoth in a, in a Star Wars game, it's always the same thing, but it's always a little bit different. Battlefront. Yeah. Battlefront, so like yeah. those are always great. It's mm -hmm. the same it's same the moment in, in Star front. history. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, yeah, story matters, but like even if you matters. have no story, like there are games where I don't even remember the story, and I just remember killing people. And especially if you're making a, a multiplayer-based FPS where it's mainly about the multiplayer, story doesn't really matter to me. But yes, I agree exactly. that it, it can improve the game. Great. Yeah. So really, I think we all agree on the fact that what makes a good FPS game is that you can kill people and you have fun killing people. So you guys pick up your controllers and go have fun killing people. That's your message. What for about robots? Games. Robots? You kill robots. Robots, you have just as much fun. Kill people robots. or robots. Yeah. Well, that's it for us guys here at Gamer Nation. Thank you so much for watching. Keep it tuned right here for Smosh Games for all your gaming entertainment, some fun times. We love you. Keep leaving comments. We'll see you later, guys.